Good morning, everyone. I'm Duke Carter, and thank you all for joining us for the Sunday edition of the Eyewitness Morning News. Many are still grieving over the huge loss of broadcast news anchor Nancy Parker. Her work on and off the camera will be highlighted throughout the morning show. New details are coming up on the investigation after we go to this weather. Meteorologist Chris Franklin has more on that. Hey, Chris. Hey, good morning, Duke. Yeah, we're thank you, Chris. Breaking overnight, a man was shot in Harvey, but he is expected to be okay. Sheriff sure, deputies say it happened near Tensis Drive. We do not know the motive in this shooting, but if you have any information that could help police, you are urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen. Well, it's only been two days after the tragic death of beloved Fox 8 News broadcaster Nancy Parker. Yesterday, the NTSB did go out to the scene where she and a trailblazing pilot were killed in a plane crash while filming a story. They confirmed that soon after Franklin Augustus took off, he radioed the controller at the Lakefront Airport Tower and said that he was having issues. He was instructed to return back to the airport, but witnesses say the plane appeared to have engine problems. They say the airplane went down and hit the ground. Now, the NTSB plans to continue to document the accident site and send the wreckage to Baton Rouge. They also plan to examine fielding records and interview more witnesses. And for those who worked at Fox 8 with Nancy, she was just much more than a colleague. Her big heart had a way of just turning co-workers into families. Nikki Davison has more about what Nancy meant to the people who worked with her. I had interned. And As a young journalist in 2008, walking into Fox 8 with Legend. Nancy Parker behind the desk was like a dream for Allison Braxton Bear. I remember getting the job and just being in awe on set with her and John. But Nancy wasn't just a leader in the newsroom. She had a way of stepping up for her co-workers when they needed it most. My mother was very sick and Nancy called my mom and she said, Miss Barbara, I'm gonna help Allison pick out her dress since you can't be there. Nancy only picked out two dresses that day. She had a natural touch like that. She said, this is your dress and she had well, the city honored Nancy Parker and Q93 DJ CJ Morgan with the second line. Morgan passed away last week after battling a long illness. <laughs> Nancy and Morgan were not New Orleans natives, but the large crowd said, well, showed that they both captured the heart of this city. Nancy Parker has been someone that I've always looked forward to in the morning and the evening. A sweet, fantastic, beautiful lady. As she reported her stories, you can hear passion, you can hear compassion, you can hear genuine uh, stories, and that's gonna be missed in our community. Many of the people who came out to the second line last night said they had not gotten a chance to meet Nancy in person, but she had become a big part of their lives over the years. And we'll keep covering this story into the evening and keep you updated as the investigation into the crash continues. Well, we will have much more after the break. Stay with us. Time now 609. If you shop at a couple of discount stores, heads up. The New Orleans City Council will discuss the fate of several of them here in the Big Easy. A new set of rules would put spacing restrictions on stores like Dollar General and Family Dollar. Now, this would stop those retail chains from crowding out other food sellers. One of the new rules is that any new discount store in New Orleans East, Algiers and parts of Gentilly could not be built within two miles of another store. This would in turn also promote the spread of healthier food options. And good news for some kids and parents as well. The Louisiana Children's Museum opens up in about two weeks in City Park and when it opens its doors, you can expect to see many new exhibits, but two favorites are no more. The little grocery store and simple machines, I know right Chris, where children could hoist themselves in the air will not be at the new location. So instead, there will be a farm to table restaurant exhibit that is a mini version of Mr. Okra's vegetable and fruit cart, as well as the quote jamming house exhibit that resembles a New Orleans nightclub. It will include a stage, instruments <laughs> and a painting of trombone shorty on the wall. It's cute. Cute, right? Well, the Children's Museum opens up later this month on August 31st. One of my earliest memories. Yes. I was in preschool uh -huh. 
and it was the Schwegmans. Yes. And yes. the WWL studio. Yes. And guess what, Chris? That's actually where I practice on the weather wall. Now, am I doing weather? And look at me now. Yeah, <laughs> you've been you've been scooted away from the wall several <laughs> times by me. It's okay. I try to go back and revisit that. But I it was understand. good though. But it was good. It was good. It was Hopefully that you know, maybe those aren't there anymore, but maybe these new exhibits will take the place of it. Maybe. But Hopefully. I like the I like the grocery store. But store. I like Schweckmans. But anywho, I do too. what can you expect today? It's gonna be another hot one. It's mm, August. August. Yeah. It's August, so just expect that. Yeah. And we do have a slightly better chance for some scattered showers during the day today. Let's take a look at what's going on outside right this Sunday edition of the Eyewitness Morning News. Of course, we're still covering the situation in the plane crash that happened in New Orleans Seas and unfortunately killed two people, Nancy Parker, as well as the pilot Franklin Augustus. But we're gonna start off with weather. We're gonna talk about what we can expect today, which is good news. Yeah, cooling showers. Yeah. So that's always welcome. We'll take that. We do need the relief at times. High temperatures today will be getting into the low mid 90s unless you're underneath one of those showers. Temperatures can quickly drop off a little bit. of. Thank you, Chris. Our own WWL TV legends like Sally Ann Roberts are remembering Nancy Parker. I sat down with her where she explained her reaction when she first heard what happened. That's what Nancy did. She lived her life in service to others. I just screamed. I mean, when you hear something that you just can't even begin to understand it, I just screamed and I kept screaming and screaming and screaming. TV personality and legend Sally Ann Roberts reflects after hearing the news that Nancy Parker died in a plane crash. We have to remember Nancy in life as the wonderful, wonderful person that she was. Sally says that she and Nancy worked together on campaigns, and this is an image of Sally, Eric, as well as Nancy covering Mitch Landrieu when he ran for the mayor of New Orleans. Sally says she and Nancy really didn't see each other often, but when they did, it was like talking to a family member. Her warmth was just so overwhelming. You just, she was so real, genuine. You just knew <laughs> that you were just talking to your sister. Sally knows what it's like to lose a family member. She lost her first husband, Willie, to cancer, a man Sally says she owes her career. She also buried her father, who was a member in the Air Force. This is my dad. Which is why her heart goes out to Franklin Augustus, who was the president of the Lake Charles chapter of the Tuskegee Airmen. I'm moved by the fact that he was a member of a local Tuskegee Airmen chapter and that he was trying to carry on the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen. My father was a Tuskegee Airman. And while many are moved by the untimely passing, Sally knows both Nancy and Franklin now see the impact of their lives. She offers this piece of advice for both families. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Well, strong words from Sally. Now, former news anchor Angela Hill also expressed her condolences. Like all of us, her heart breaks this morning for Nancy Parker's husband, Glenn Boyd, and their children. Uh, Nancy and I actually met because we were both covering the canonization of the founder of Xavier University. And we were in Rome and we met at the airport. She had just started at Channel 8 and I just instantly liked her. She just had a real engaging charisma. Uh, you know, I often think about what it takes to be a good anchor and Nancy had it all. She had credibility, she had authority, and most importantly, she had empathy. And I think that combination is what made her as successful as she was. But the bottom line is that's who she was. And you can literally see the sign of support here. The TikTok Cafe in Metairie, known for its many messages, posted this sign that reads, quote, Nancy Parker, a life well lived. God bless you. Also, tragically lost in that plane, the pilot Franklin Augustus. Augustus was a stunt pilot who described himself 30 years ago as the world's only black civilian airshow acrobatic pilot. The 69-year-old was also president of the Lake Charles chapter of the Tuskegee Airmen Incorporation. Though he was not a Tuskegee Airman himself, he used his platform with the organization to encourage other young black children to become pilots. 
In a 1988 Times Picayune article, Augustus spoke about the color barrier between whites and blacks in New Orleans. Augustus was also involved in an organization called the Drug Fighter, which fights crime and gangs in New Orleans. Augustus was a licensed pilot who had been flying since he was 19 years old. And earlier yesterday, the Tuskegee Airmen Incorporation released a statement on the death of Augustus. The director says he was, quote, one of the most passionate people she knew, adding that he was remarkable and full of energy and that he will be greatly missed. Of course, we're going to keep covering this story into the evening and we'll keep you updated as the investigation into the crash continues. We'll be right back.